936 here on the Big 550 KTRS. There is a new book out called The Promise of a Pencil. It is a uh, unbelievable story how an extraordinary person can change or can create extraordinary change. Adam Braun is our guest. Adam, you are the founder of this organization called Pencils for Promise. It's an award-winning nonprofit organization. You've built more than 200 schools around the country in 2012. Forbes named you the Forbes Under 30 list, and Wired Magazine says you're one of the 50 people who will change the world. Good morning, Adam Braun. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. The book is called The Promise of a Pencil, and it all started when you were taking a trip to India. What happened? Yeah, so I was a college student, uh, essentially on a study abroad program, but I was kind of at the time really angled towards a career on Wall Street. I started working at uh, a hedge fund when I was 16 that summer, a fund of fun, held all these different opportunities within the financial sector. Uh, and then I decided to just get out of my comfort zone. I just, you know, before going down this kind of um, traditional path, I just wanted to see what else was out there and went on a, a ship uh, as part of this semester at sea, study abroad program. Um, my ship got hit by a 60 foot rogue wave. I had a certain death experience. Um, and off of that, I just kind of looked at things through new eyes, and I found myself in India about a month later backpacking and found a boy begging on the streets and asked him if he could have anything in the world, what would he want most? And to my surprise, his answer was not a house or a car or a boat, the things that I thought were so important, but he simply asked me for a pencil. Uh, and um, I gave him my pencil. He just, he just lit up, and I realized at that moment two things. First, um, the transformative power of education and how many millions of children have no access to school at all let alone a quality um, schooling. And then secondly, that you know, even I as a young person, uh, which is, you know, you're traditionally told you have to wait until you have fame or influence or money or power to change the world, that I could actually impact one person's life. And so I started carrying around pens and pencils and backpacking all over the developing world through dozens and dozens of countries and eventually just became enamored with uh, this idea that we could create a world in which every child has access to quality education and um, went to work at Bain & Company, got this incredible training, and then decided to apply all of those learnings to um, building a world-class nonprofit and started Pencils of Promise with $25, asked for friends to give um, donations in lieu of gifts for my 25th birthday. And from that point forward, that's what I've been working on for um, a little bit more than five years, and now we've broken ground on more than 200 schools around the world and I have more than 20,000 students uh, in our programs every single day. The book is called The Promise of a Pencil, How an Extraordinary Person Can Create Extraordinary Change. Adam Braun. Adam, um, what happened to the kid who asked you for the pencil? Uh, I mean, the, the tough thing is, truthfully, I, 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 I'm not able to stay in touch with him. And so, I mean, he was a street beggar. So it's not like I could swap Facebook information with him or we could stay in touch via Skype. And this was also in 2005, so technology just really wasn't where right. it is now. And, and so I don't actually... He is, but I do know the stories of literally hundreds of our, our students that I've spent through the years of the organization. Yeah, so the uh, the kid who helped change the world doesn't even know it. He's living somewhere in India uh, begging for food, not, not knowing that he helped change the world. Well, I think oftentimes, I mean, truthfully, we're not aware of the impact that we have on other people's lives. Uh, you know, there's so many people that uh, truthfully have changed my life in really profound ways. And if I could go back and share with them the impact that they've had, I'm, I'm sure it would hopefully make a difference. But I think that's just one of the kind of the mysteries of life is, you know, sometimes the littlest thing can make the biggest difference in someone else's life. So you, 200 schools around the world, I have to ask you, um, there are many people listening to this saying, well, wait, the schools here in America need to be rebuilt. There are schools that are falling down here. Why, why go to around the world? Why not help people right here in your own home country? Sure, it's a great question. I mean, there's, there's a couple different reasons. The, the, the first reason, ultimately, is that uh, what we have in this country is a somewhat broken system. So the quality of education is not as high as we would like it to be. But we have an existing system. And in the countries, uh, and specifically the regions, which are rural parts of the developing world, so you're talking about people living in mud huts, bamboo huts, without often uh, running water or electricity, there's no system to address those children. And so oftentimes when we're coming in and building schools or providing teacher training or scholarships, it's the very first form of education. And so that, that was one of the reasons. The second one was that I didn't have much money to start with. And if you really want to impact domestic education, it takes millions and millions of dollars often. And, you know, starting with 25 bucks and asking friends to rally a couple dollars together, if, if I looked at literally the return on investment, 
the dollars could impact a lot more lives if I did it in areas of you know deepest poverty. And then the third one, which is ultimately the most important, is I'm actually very interested in improving the educational system here. What I've seen, though, is that it's actually not about the infrastructure. We have quality classrooms. What we need is new teaching methodologies and ways of addressing our children. And the beauty of our work is that we're able to do that at very low cost and prove uh, new innovations. And then my hope is within the next couple of years, some of the stuff that we're testing out in Ghana and Guatemala and Laos, uh, once it's proven effective, that we can bring it back and provide better opportunities for our children at home. So in a sense, it's almost easier to change the outside world before you change the inside world? Well, it's, it, I mean, one of the things that I've seen, and for anyone that's listening and works in domestic education, I'm sure they can attest to this, we pour hundreds of millions of dollars into trying to change a very large bureaucratic system without much measurable results. And so part of the issue is that you have all of these entrenched interests. You have labor unions, teacher unions, government-funded programs that have restrictions on how money can or can't be spent. And it becomes pretty laborious to try and move this huge kind of mountain Whereas where we work, I mean, literally in the next two months, I can implement e-readers in classrooms in Ghana and then test how that classroom does versus the neighboring classroom in a village nearby that has none of those things. And for, you know, very, very little money, actually get very clear results on whether it works or not. And so strangely, I find that innovation is often able to um, move forward in the places with the fewest bottlenecks. And right now, in my belief, the place to do that is where education is actually uh, least provided, but can be most cost efficient. The book is called The Promise of a Pencil. Adam Braun, you're going to be in St. Louis tonight for a book signing yeah. and a book reading, and I'm going to be emceeing the thing. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been just blown away by the response. You know, I put the book out uh, last week. I found out over the weekend it's number two on the New York Times bestseller list, and all proceeds from the book go back into supporting the organization. And so, you know, if you're uh, looking for a great gift for uh, somebody that's just trying to kind of get unstuck from their current position or even somebody who's, you know, going into their kind of graduation period. I, I found it to be a pretty great gift from the feedback that I've been getting thus far. St. Louis County Library tonight, right across the street from Plaza Frontenac, 7 p.m. for a book signing and a book reading. Adam Braun is going to be here. Uh, it's an extraordinary story to hear in person and uh, can't wait to hear more about it. The, pro the book is called The Promise of a Pencil, How an Extraordinary Person Can Change, uh, Can Create Extraordinary Change. Adam, a couple more minutes here with you. Um, yep. When you go into these countries, you mentioned uh, some of the countries you go into. How much mm -hmm. of them want you to help and how much of them want to hinder you? Because there's a certain amount of, you know, you're, you're teaching these people to question authority at some point, And how much does the authority want them to be taught that? Yeah, it's, it's another great question. I mean, the truth is what we're teaching more than anything is not to question authority, but to seek opportunity. And what I've found, at least in the countries where we work, is that it's welcome and that it's embraced. You know, there's certain degrees of questioning authority that, sure, no public government or, you know, ministry wants, but that's actually part of the criteria in how we select countries. We don't go into places that we're not asked to come into. Uh, we, we really rigorously evaluate countries and ultimately their education ministries and say, look, we're going to come in, but you need to own and sustain this. It's not going to be Westerners showing up and handing out gifts. It's got to be owned and sustained by local populations. You know, more than 90 percent of our staff is from the country in which we're working and oftentimes from the rural countryside in which we're addressing these issues. And so thus far, you know, we've had a few challenges, but for the most part, it's, it's been pretty smooth because part of the criteria that we look at is, is this an active partnership, and is this something that the community and the country themselves want? The book is called The Promise of a Pencil. Adam Braun is going to be in St. Louis tonight, 7 p.m., book signing, book reading. Adam, did your, did your brother discover Justin Bieber, or is he his manager? What's, what's that connection? Uh, it's actually both. So, um, so I've, uh, I've known Justin for a long time. Uh, my brother was one who kind of saw his initial YouTube video and just thought, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there. And so he, uh, you know, tracked him down and essentially became his manager and has uh, kind of been his manager ever since. And, and Justin Bieber is a big um, sponsor and a big su supporter of uh, your organization as well, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. So, again, I've known Justin since before he was a celebrity. Right. Um, and so part of the original idea – for the organization was to create something that really spoke to young people and enable them and anyone else, regardless of age, status, or location, to feel that like they can make a tangible difference in the world. And so 
when I started, you know, he was just another young kid that I, I knew and was interested in supporting us. Obviously, as his star has risen, he's been able to support in pretty fantastic ways. But again, that was one of the reasons that I wrote this book is that I really genuinely believe that any person, um, again, regardless of age, status, or location, has the opportunity to create a life of both success and significance. And you know, more than anything, this book is, is framed around these, these 30, 30 um, short chapters, each of which is titled with a mantra. And those mantras are the guiding steps to creating that life, whether you're you know, a kid sitting in your room playing guitar or you're somebody who, uh, who's kind of got a couple kids at home and trying to figure out what your next step is. 200 different schools in Africa, Asia, Latin America uh, delivered over 15 million educational hours to children in poverty. What is Adam Braun? What have you learned on this journey you're on? Uh, I've learned a lot. I mean, again, that's why that was why I wrote the book was truthfully to share some of these learnings that I wish somebody told me at the very start. Um, but one of the biggest ones for me, uh, it's it's one of the final mantras of of the book, and it's a phrase by um, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, which is, "If your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough." And I think oftentimes we have these fears because there's this aspirational self that we're, we're ultimately striving toward. And we're, we're almost a little scared of what would happen if it became real. But ultimately, I just I love that phrase, if your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough. And that's one of the biggest things that I've learned along the way. That's a really good quote. The book is uh, The Promise of a Pencil. Adam Braun, tonight, 7 o'clock, for a book signing and a book reading at St. Louis County Library. Adam, I look forward to meeting you in, in person. Safe travels, and we'll talk to you tonight. Thank you. Looking forward to it. You got it. Adam Braun, our guest. Uh, the Promise of a Pencil. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. It's a good way to end. 748 here. We'll come back and wrap it up. Big 550.